shout of the king is in the house. Lift up both hands, say in the name of Jesus, I command chains to break. I break and destroy every chain, every shackle, every yoke, in the name of Jesus, be destroyed. Break, be destroyed. Command it now to break in the name of Jesus. We break every yoke, break every chain, break every shackle in the name of Jesus. Now, lift it up. Holy Ghost, do it again. Yeah. Do it again in my life. somebody hug somebody welcome somebody that is what church is all about hallelujah amen the shout of the king is in the house are you clapping are you excited you are not I want to talk to you about a subject entitled the blood still speaks second peter 1 3 according as his divine he has given unto us according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life that and pertains to life that pertains to life and godliness uh -huh. through through the knowledge of him through, through the knowledge that word knowledge of him there means pronostos in greek it's a higher level of knowledge look at me tell somebody the difference between where you are go ahead and where you must be is between knowledge and ignorance It's your ignorance that is keeping you from where you must be. And it's also the lack of knowledge or the knowledge you need to get you there. You know, I was trying to, I was trying to call somebody the other day and I couldn't find the number. And I said, but the number is in my phone. So Joel said to me, he said, there's a button on this side of your phone. He was then out of the country and he said, press it 
and speak to the phone and tell the phone, call me so so and so. And I said, You mean my phone can do that? I said, Yes, your phone can do that. So I said, Okay. I said, Are you sure? I said, Papa, it works. So I pressed the thing and I said, Call me so so and so. And the phone called the person. And I said, You mean this phone can do this? And I'm struggling. And I said to myself, You know something? Ignorance is killing us. And, and I realized that I have this gadget that can do a lot of things. And I'm struggling. And I'm ignorant. You are looking at me. You too, you are ignorant of something. I'm talking about man, you are looking like you, you are enlightened. You are not enlightened about everything. Something is beating you somewhere. I'm telling you, everybody is suffering from some deficiency. Everybody has issues. So don't look at me with that way and say, so you don't know the phone can do that. You too, you don't know something. So don't make me look I'm the only ignorant person here. You too are ignorant of something. But the fact of the matter is that the Bible says you err because you know not the scriptures, not the power of God. And my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. It's the lack of what we don't know that is killing us. A lot of things are killing us. It is said that bacteria, and one of the things that spreads bacteria than anything else is handshaking. Handshakes. Handshakes. And you know where it comes from? Counting money. Money carries a lot of gems. This thing called money. Money. That every one of you is working for. And you act like you don't like money. But tomorrow morning by five you are up. And the traffic everywhere is because everybody is chasing money. But they say, I'm going to work. It's not true. It's money. Money, cell phones, cell phones carries a lot of gems. Cell phones. Then your car, car keys, and the door, and the house door, the office door, the handle, they all carry bacteria. And do you know, even the water? We bath with the water we bath with. Gems can enter your pores. The water we bath with. And we brush with pipe water. You don't have to brush with it, you brush with bottled water. Uh, you are looking at me. You can call me gem freak, whatever. But I'm telling you what is killing us. Is ignorance. And do you know one of the greatest cure to cancer? Two things. Greatest cures to cancer or things that prevent cancer. One of them is coconut water because it's alkaline. Alkaline. And you can't develop cancer if your body is alkaline. And one of the things that prevents cancer is coconut water. And we have a lot here and we won't drink it. We are drinking Coke and soda. 24 carats of sugar in Coke and in soda. But we won't drink coconut water and it's alkaline. Then there's another thing that prevents cancer in the human body. And you can't find it in America. It's in Ghana. They call it aluguin tungui. Now, I know you are laughing because you are typical African, so you are looking at me some way. You can't get it in America. I went to, I went to a medical treatment center. And when they did the test, they asked me, and they mentioned, they couldn't mention Alugun Tungui. So they, saw, they showed me the picture, the green thing, with all those spots and things behind it. And if you like, Google it and see you will see what Alugun Tungui does. It's amazing. And we have it here. And we don't know about it. So I'm using all this to tell you that it's your ignorance that is killing you.
I was talking to a billionaire friend of mine. I brought him around with by the tent here. And I was talking about some idea I had. And he was telling me, that idea you have is money. So don't share it with anybody. And I said, why? He said, if you share it with somebody, they'll take it from you. And they'll make money. So I said, what do I do? He said, this is how you handle it. And he showed me what to do. And he said, before you share this idea with anybody, let them sign this and sign that and sign that to protect you. Other than that, you are giving away money. And most of the millionaire friends I have, eh, they've never given me money. They don't give you money. They give you keys. They give you ideas. When, hear me, all the billionaires you hear about, Bill Gates, it wasn't money that gave Bill Gates money. It was an idea he had. And when he put the idea to use, money followed him. He did not pray for money. He didn't fast for money. The fasting and the prayers will bring an idea. The idea when it's executed will cause money to follow you. Tell somebody, do you know you are sitting on money? You. Tell somebody, do you know you are a potential trillionaire? Trillionaire, you. Tell somebody, you, you, you. You are a potential trillionaire. But the reason why you are broke, I tell my pastors when they say they don't have money, I look at them and I say, lack of money is lack of new ideas. Whenever you lack ideas, you'll be broke. Anybody with money had an idea and met a need. The doctor is relevant and you pay any money to the doctor when you are sick. When you have a problem, the lawyer becomes relevant. He will charge you anything and you pay when you are in trouble. When an animal is trapped, eh? when you set a trap for an animal and it catches the trap, the leg of the animal is in the trap, it cries differently. And when the leg is out, it's a different cry. So when the leg is in the trap and is crying, that is when you make your demands. When the leg is out of the trap, that is it. All right, I'm using all of this to establish a fact that everything that you and I need that pertains to living right and well and everything that you need that pertains to successful spiritual, spiritual life and godly life is already available. But it comes through the knowledge. It comes what? It comes what? Tell somebody the blood still speaks. Tell somebody the blood of Jesus still speaks today. It does. And healing belongs to the children. The provision for our healing and health is provided. Justification, sanctification, forgiveness of sin, purity, holy, everything we need is available, but it is not automatic. Tell somebody what is written. It's not automatic. You have to appropriate, engage, apply before it works. By his stripes, we were healed. Were we healed? If we were, then we are. Turn to somebody and say, Why are you feeling those joint pains? You. Tell someone say, why, why are you sick? You are sick somewhere. You look beautiful, handsome, but you are sick somewhere. Let's face it. Uh -huh. Why? If you are healed, why are you sick? The provision is there, but you got to work it. The Bible says, and her, as long as he differed nothing from a child, he is subjected to tribunes, to government, to governors. Why? Because he's a child. What does it mean? You, are, you haven't come of age. You haven't come to the place of maturity. You are not skillful enough to be given the right to what is yours. Everything we need till we get out of here, physically and spiritually, is already provided. How do you get to it? You get to it by understanding and knowledge of it. Other than that, you can't have it. Gold is not gold until it goes through fire. 
your value at the marketplace is determined by the process you were subjected to. It's the process and the exercises that determine your placement. You are going through spiritual exercises that will make you a spiritual Navy SEAL and a very dangerous individual. Now come with me to Revelation 12, 11. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb uh -huh. and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. So how do we overcome? By the Talk blood. to me. How many of you want victory in your life on a daily basis? How many of you want to overcome something? You need to overcome something. Look at somebody and say, then you need the blood. You need the blood. That's why you need to engage the blood. You need to apply the blood. You need to appropriate the blood on daily basis. Say daily basis, daily basis. It's an ongoing thing. So the blood is there. The blood is available, but it doesn't work automatically. You have to learn how to engage it, how to apply the blood by the word of their testimony. What is the word of their testimony? You must learn how to speak and confess and say what the blood what the bible says the blood of jesus has done and does in the life of the believer if you don't speak to what the scripture says the blood has done the enemy won't back off when the devil came to jesus to tempt him three times what did he say it is written it is written it is written if you want the devil to leave you, you have to know the scriptures. You know not. You err because you know not the scripture. So the more scripture you know, and the more you apply the scriptures you know, the devil will leave you. He will leave you for a season and give you a briefing space. How many of you need some briefing space? To, come on, come on, somebody. Come on, you need a briefing space. You know sometimes you can get weary and get tired oh yeah sometimes I get battle weary sometimes I just get tired and I don't feel like preaching I don't feel like talking to you I don't feel like seeing you I just feel like minding my own business but that is feelings you can't depend on that at a level and at a point there are some things you can do that's why Paul said, all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. So if they overcame by the blood of the lamb, you also need the blood to overcome. Say, I need the blood of Jesus to overcome on daily basis. Psalm 107 verse 2. Psalm 107 verse 2. Quickly. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. How many of you believe you have been redeemed from the hand of the enemy? You do? Then tell somebody, you must say it. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians, he said, he said, he said, according as we believe, they spoke, we also believe, and therefore we speak. Therefore we speak. If you believe, you must say it. Tell somebody, you either believe or you don't believe. That's it. There's nothing like that. You either believe or you don't. Say you either believe or you don't believe. Oh, come on, talk to me. If you believe, then you have to say it. Look at 2 Corinthians 4.13. 2 Corinthians 4 13. We have in the, the same, same spirit, spirit of faith, faith according okay. as it is written. Uh -huh. I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also, we believe. also believe, therefore, and therefore speak. Therefore, we keep quiet. Therefore, we say nothing. If you believe, what will you do? Do you believe you've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? From the hand of the enemy? Then say so. When do you say so? Every day. So, why do you have to say so? You must remind yourself and remind the devil. You remind yourself and remind the enemy. If you are a prisoner and you've been discharged and a policeman sees you and says, Hey, you, you are a prisoner. Were you not sentenced and jailed? What are you doing here? You tell him, Sir, I'm free. I've been dispatched. 
and discharged and acquitted. I'm out of prison. You have to say so. Tell two people, say so. Again, the problem with us is that we believe, but we don't speak what we believe. The Bible said with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, but with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. So it's not enough to believe in the heart. You must confess. You must say so. Tell somebody, say so. Go back again. Go back again. Having what? The same spirit of, of faith. faith. According as it is written, I believe. Therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. Therefore, speak. Therefore, speak. Therefore, we speak. I will not die. I will live. But live. And what? Declare the works of the Lord. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Let the redeem of the Lord, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy, say by the blood of redemption, say by the blood of my redemption, I command my unconditional release from the hand of any enemy in my father's house, in my mother's house. I command the unconditional release of my loved ones, my sons and my daughters, my grandchildren, my children, my loved ones. I command the deliverance and the unconditional release of my loved ones and everyone that concerns me from the hand of the enemy, from the hand of the enemy, from the hand of the enemy, in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Do you believe it? Say it. They shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. Thou shalt be far from oppression. Your children shall be established in righteousness. Believe it, thou it, confess it. Sin shall not have dominion over you. And you are struggling with sin, confess it. You have to keep saying what the scripture says until it happens in your life. It is not automatic. You have to work at this. It is work. Put your hands together. Shout yes. Hebrews 12, 24. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. The new covenant. Tell somebody, you have a covenant with God. Tell somebody, God has a covenant with you. God has a covenant with you. Go ahead, look at it. And to the blood of sprinkling. The blood of sprinkling. That speaketh better things than that of Abel. The blood speaks forgiveness. It speaks mercy and pardon. It speaks pardon of iniquity. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities and healeth all thy diseases. Forgiveness of all iniquities and healing of all our diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, crowned thee with loving kindness. Who satisfies your mouth with good things and renewed thy youth like an eagle. Wow! It's not enough to read it. It's not enough to read it. You have to what? Say it. If you believe it. If you believe it. If you believe it. Because confession brings. Confession brings. Proverbs 6 2. You see, I have to teach this thing because some of you believers, eh? I hear some believers who say something like, uh, believers say something like I just want to crash so a believer will be traveling and say as soon as I arrive I'm just going to check into my hotel and crash and you are going to fly and I'm talking about crash somebody said I'm tired I wish I died you wish you died God does not deliver us from our friends he delivers us from our enemies listen death doesn't need an invitation he wants you already so don't give it in an invitation go ahead thou art thou snared. Are snared with the words of thy mouth the words of somebody's mouth no by whose mouth your own mouth you see thou art taken by it, and thou art taken with the words of thy mouth uh -huh. you are snared taken. and taken snared and taken you are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken. That means captive. You become a, you are a captive of what you say with your mouth. 
your own words. And sometimes when you hear the words of believers and the things we say, it's very scary. Now, I'm not saying you should lie when you are feeling down. Sometimes people ask me, Baba, how are you doing? I said, I'm fighting, but I'm winning. Simple. I'm fighting. It's true, but I'm winning. Somebody asked me the other day, he said, Papa, you don't look good. I said, I'm having some strange feelings and emotions. My feelings, my emotions are bizarre, but I am top. I am on top of it. And that's why the Bible said the righteous falleth seven times, and seven times he rises up again. So every now and then you can go down, but you don't stay there. You come up. I was telling somebody between a wise man and an intelligent person. I said, I prefer being wise than being smart. I hear people say, I'm very smart, but I want and prefer to be wise than smart. And I tell the difference between being smart and being wise. Being smart is learning the skills of how to perform and go through the motions. But being wise is knowledge you acquire based on what you have survived, learned, and been through. So to be smart, you can do something and, and know how to get away with it so you are not caught. But a wise man won't go through it. A wise man will say, no, I know the consequence of this thing. Even though I can get out of it, I won't do it. That's why he said, that's why he said, he said that it was good for me that I was afflicted. Why? Because it has made me wise and not smart. You see, somebody smart eh, will know how to maneuver and dodge and hide behind this thing. But somebody that is wise know that even though you dodge and you hide behind this thing eh, every day for this man one day so don't just be smart be wise tell somebody don't be smart be wise amen the blood that speaketh even though it speaks you have to engage it. You know, sometimes I hear people say, you know, I was somewhere and your name came up. And people were saying all kinds of things. And I have to speak for you and defend you. And I look at them and I say, <laughs> thank you. But next time when you hear people speaking and saying things about me, don't defend me. Don't say anything. And he said, why? I said, there is a blood that answers for me. There is a blood that speaks for me. And I keep engaging that blood every day. Let's move on quickly. Exodus 12, 13. Exodus 12, 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house. A token upon thy house. May the blood of Jesus rest upon the walls of your house. Your windows, your gates, and your doors. Your lanterns. Let the blood of Jesus be a sign and a mark. And in the day when evil comes to your area, let them pass over you in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Uh -huh. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. You see, there's plagues in the land. There's a plague in the land. But the difference between the children of Israel and the Egyptians is one, was one thing. It was then the knowledge of the blood and the lack of knowledge of the blood. If any Egyptian had heard what the Jews heard and had applied the blood to their doorposts and lanterns, their firstborn wouldn't have died. Because the command was to whoever heard it. It wasn't just to the children of Israel, but whoever heard it, if they had applied the blood, the angel of death, wouldn't say, oh, this blood is covering the house of an Egyptian. He said, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, may the blood be a mark and a sign for you. Amen. 
Exodus 12, 22 and 23 quickly. And he shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood uh -huh. that is in the basin uh -huh. and strike the lintel of, and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through and to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your house to smite you. May the blood of Jesus cover you and your house. May the blood of Jesus cover this nation. May the blood cover our economy. Let the blood cover leadership. May the blood cover the president. May the blood of Jesus cover this land and this nation from the plague of destruction. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. But hear me, it's not enough to just hear it. You must engage the blood. You must appropriate the blood. You must apply. Here, he said the blood was, where, where was the blood? In the what? Talk to me, the blood was where? The basin. And what happened? The angel of death did not pass their homes or their dwellings because the blood was in the basin. They had to use hyssop, put it in the blood, and apply the blood. You can have money in the bank and you can be in need of money. If you don't go to the bank and withdraw the money, you can die. I was told somebody, true story happened in Walmart. He was in the session of shoulder, the water and the shoulder session, and he died out of dehydration. Do you hear what I said? He was in the water and shoulder session of Walmart and died out of dehydration. All he should have done is to open one bottle and run to the place and say, I drank the, the water. This is the bottle I'm paying. He died. You can have soap and water in your house and still stink. Did you hear what I said? You can have what? And still, if you don't apply the soap and the water to your body, and you say, I have soap. I have water. Having soap and water is not enough. Having the scriptures and the word of God and the promises about the blood is not enough. You must engage the blood. And in the days and times we live in, like never before, we need to engage the blood of Jesus. We need to apply the blood of Jesus. We need to sing about the blood like never before. Please stand on your feet. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, you when I, when I see the blood, you. Lift up your hands, sing it now. See the blood. Somebody sing. When I, when I see the blood. When I, when I see the blood. I will pass. I will pass. overcame by the blood of the Lamb you and I will also overcome by the blood of the Lamb the overcoming power of the blood of the Lamb the victorious power of the blood of the Lamb today I want every believer to pray that God will give you victory by the blood that you will triumph by the blood that you have the upper hand by the blood that you will break through by the blood of Jesus that your dwellings your walls your windows your house will break through by the blood that anyone that will plan evil against you and your house that through the blood of Jesus it will backfire anybody that takes your picture or your children's picture your loved one's picture anywhere for evil that by the blood of Jesus it will backfire open your mouth engage the blood 
engage the blood of Jesus. Engage the blood. Deploy the blood of Jesus. Activate the blood. Don't hold your peace. Don't keep silent. Let the blood speak. Let the blood speak. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Hear me. Tell somebody there is victory through the blood of Jesus. Whatever victory you desire and you need, you can have it through the blood of Jesus. And number two, we can overturn any evil and any impending or imminent danger against us, this house, your dwelling and this nation. We can overturn it through the blood of Jesus. So right now, we appropriate the victory of the blood of Jesus. We overturn any eminent danger and evil. They have devised against you, your house, this house, and this nation. Any advantage the enemy has to turn the clock of Ghana back to prevent this nation from going forward through our own pettiness and attitude and devices. Let the blood of Jesus overturn it. Let the blood of Jesus overturn it. Anyone here that has been targeted to be attacked, to be hurt, to be destroyed. Anyone that has been targeted for evil, let the blood of Jesus overturn it. There is something about the blood of Jesus. The overcoming blood is the superior power over every other power. When the blood of Jesus was shed, the walls, the rocks, Mountains, they shook and they cracked. The grave opened up. The earth shook when the blood touched the air. You can't mess with the blood of Jesus. Anybody that is messing with us, let the blood of Jesus mess with them. Anybody that is coming after us, let the blood of Jesus go after them. Put your hands together, employ the blood, deploy the blood, engage the blood to overturn any evil and any attack. Or your loved ones, your children, your grandchildren, your family. Let the blood of Jesus cover. Let the blood of Jesus protect. Engage the blood. Plead the blood of Jesus. Put your hands together. Take it higher. Take it higher. Engage the blood. Appropriate the blood. Apply the blood. Plead the blood. Deploy the services of the blood of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus work. Let the blood of Jesus intervene. Let the blood of Jesus speak and answer for you. Let the blood of Jesus speak and answer for you. Come on, put it together. Let the blood of Jesus speak. Any advantage the enemy is working with, any advantage the enemy has, over us as individuals, over our families, over this nation, over the economy, over the leadership of this nation, over the president, any advantage Satan is using as a vetoing power, let the blood of Jesus veto it. We veto any vetoing powers of Satan by the blood of Jesus. Let any advantage he's holding over your head and my head, over this house and your house, over our finances and over this nation and the leadership of this nation, by the blood of Jesus, which is the superior blood, we veto and we deny and strip the enemy of any advantage he's working with. Put your hands together, use the blood of Jesus, cancel, deny, strip the enemy of that advantage. Lift up your hands. We are going to sing this song and make a declaration and a proclamation. One of the most powerful prayers in the Bible is the prayers of proclamations. And when we make proclamation through the superior blood of Jesus, it works. I'm telling you. I know some people in this church who were confronted by some situations and we made proclamation by the blood and they took them to some places. And the places they took them, some of them, they are here. They took them to Dahomey. And they did things. And the juju man called and told them, you, the church you go to, never leave that church. 
they are here. And they called me to tell me, and they said, you have been brought here several times, but whenever we do the thing, it doesn't work. We, we do the thing, but it doesn't work. Anything they try to do against you, it will not work. And anybody who tries to mess with you, your children, your loved ones, your family, it doesn't matter who they are and what they are working with. Let it backfire, backfire, backfire. In the name of Jesus, backfire. Anybody who tries to mess with you, let the blood of Jesus mess with them. Lift up your hands. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, you are the God that answers by fire. You possess the heavens and the earth. Let not men say, where is our God? In the name of your son, Jesus, by the superior blood of Jesus, from the throne room perspective, we call upon the heavens and the earth to bear witness this day that we proclaim by the blood of your son that there will be no more disappointment financial sabotage financial diversion financial setback or disappointment or interference whatsoever anymore henceforth in the lives of your people and this nation in the name of Jesus Christ no more in the name of Jesus no more sabotage no more restrictions no more limitation no more diversion no more disappointment no more delays no more setback in the name of Jesus no more no more put your hands together shout no more now hear me this is what I want you to do you see before people have a wedding eh, there is something we do we come to do a wedding rehearsal and then on the wedding day we perform according to the rehearsal I want us to rehearse the victory I want us to rehearse what God will do before it happens I want us to give thanks in advance with your hands lifted up all over this place we command safety for travelers we command a safe passage for travelers we command divine protection journey mercies for travelers we command a safe route a safe route for every traveler we secure every aircraft and airline we rebuke strange weathers. We bind strange weathers. We bind strange incidents in the air, on land and on water. We bind strange happenings. We command that the Lord will prosper your journey. That it shall be well with you. That you will return untouched. That you won't be a victim. You will not be a casualty of any misfortune. You will not die prematurely. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. In your laying down and in your rising up, the Lord show you mercy. The blood of Jesus cover you. The blood of Jesus answer for you. The blood of Jesus speak for you. And anyone that will ish, will, will in any way wish you ill, let it be ill with them. And anyone that wishes you well, let it be well with them. Any hidden agenda to cause you pain, to cause this house grief and pain, let it backfire in the name of Jesus. Let it backfire in the name of Jesus. Now I command your healing from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. I command your healing right now. I command your release. I command your deliverance. I break your chain. I break your yoke. I break your shackle. I break every negative cycle in your life. Above all, as you live here, I command a way out for you. I command a way out. A way out financially. A way out maritally. A way out for your family. A way out for your business. A way out for the economy. A way out for this nation. I command a way out. 
put your hands together and declare a way out, a way out, a way out, a way out, a way out. Receive a way out in the name of Jesus. Lift it up. Let's worship. There's a way out. There's a way out. There's a way out. There is a way out. You will not be stuck. You will not be entrapped. You will not be ambushed. There's a way out. There's a way out. There's a way out. There's a way out of financial debt. There's a way out of embarrassment. A way out of sin. A way out of temptation. A way out of trial. A way out of every difficulty. A way out. 